Hello, my name is He Su Lee, an EM application specialist at Keysai Technologies. In the past, I have been involved with many transition design projects for high frequency and high speed applications. Today, in this how to video, I would like to share some learnings with you from those projects. I'll focus on two things in this video. First, I'll show the process for accurately modeling a transition, which sometimes can be a quite challenging task. Yet, we can get excellent agreement between simulated and measured results as shown in the slide if we do it correctly. Second, I'll show the process for improving the transition design to get better performance. This slide shows an example of improved return loss performance even with a pretty well designed transition. All right, let's get started. Let me show you the actual full board used for this video. Since the board is reference board for characterization, it has many SMA connectors. The PCB is a six layer Rogers 4350, and this is the ADS layout of the board. In my experience, there are four important factors to achieve the accurate modeling of a connector to board transition. First, we need to have an accurate layout of the PCB design. Second, the board stack up needs to be accurately defined. Third, we must have accurate values for material properties such as DK and DF. And fourth, we need to accurately model the 3D connectors. Any problems with this may cause inaccuracy in the results. Okay, let's start with the layout. Since we are only interested in analyzing portion of this design, not all, we need to first cookie cut the layout. I'll show you how to do this in ADS. You can draw a rectangle or polygon that includes the area of interest, then select the shape and click crop to selected menu button. Now we have the layout. Next, let's make sure the PCB stack up is correctly defined. We can access the ADS stack up editor from EM setup window. Here the stack up and the strip line is located at the fourth conductor layer site 4. It is important to set the stack up dimension as accurately as possible since it affects the impedance of the transmission line structures, eventually the accuracy of simulations. Let's make sure all materials correctly defined. Select the material you want to check in the stack up window, then click this button to access the details. Here's the material definition for the PCB. Now we have to create the SMA connector. However, in a typical board layout tools, there is no easy way to create 3D connector models. The reason is because most layout tools are limited to only two dimensions, not full 3D. Therefore, we will use EM Pro, a full 3D electromagnetic simulation platform to create the 3D connector model and bring it into ADS for complete full wave 3D EM simulations. Let me show you how to do this. Starting in EM Pro, we can create the connector by either importing a 3D CAD design or using EM Pro's native drawing capability. Although we'll use the import option for this example, it may be a good idea to cover on this with another video later. Many CAD formats are supported in EM Pro. Let's import the connector's set files. With my experience, it is important to model the structure as accurately as possible, where it carries the signal, such as transmission media, but you can possibly simplify other areas for the simulation accuracy and speed. The color is all blue, since no materials are assigned. We bring material definitions from the material library or create our own and then drag and drop the material to the object to complete material assignments. Once the drawing is completed, you must assign a port or multiple ports to the design so that you can calculate as parameters. Ports are only used when you need to calculate as parameters from that location. If you don't need as parameters, then you don't have to create them. Let's define a port at the coax input of the connector. We'll use waveguide port for the port type. The reason is because the waveguide port comes with the least port parasitics. 
My rule of thumb is to use the waveguide port, then she port otherwise non-calibrated voltage source. After the port assignments are completed, you can save the project in open access format, which can be loaded as a library in ADS later. If you'd like to know the details of this project, including the connector dimensions, stack up, and material definitions, don't worry. I'll tell you how to get the project at the end of this video. Okay, good. Now let me show you how we use this connector in ADS. We'll add the EMPRO SMA connector project to ADS as a library. In the ADS main window, go to the design kit menu, then select manage library and browse for the EMPRO project. Then click the add library menu to add the project. Now you will be able to see the EMPRO design as a library in ADS with a various cell views. One of the cells is called EMPRO cell views. You can directly open the EMPRO project by clicking open button. If you make any changes to the design here in EMPRO and save them, those changes will be automatically synchronized in ADS. Also, it comes with an ADS layout cell view as well as a schematic symbol view that you can use in either ADS layout or schematic. Let's place the connector on the board. You can drag and drop the layout view of the EMPRO component to where you like to position in the ADS layout. Then we can rotate the components for a proper angle. I'll mention a few options associated with EMPRO 3D components. With this streamlined case, the connector is mounted on the top side of the board. However, there are cases where the connector goes to the back side of the board. In the case, please turn on Custom Component Meter Z to Yes, and also please set Custom Component on top to No so that the connector can sit on the top of the conductor. Okay, you remember that we define a port in EMPRO for the connector. The port in EMPRO is not a port in ADS but two pins with plus and minus terminal. So we still need to create a port in ADS. Let's put the pins on the connector and make it a port in the EM setup window. Here is the final 3D view of the design which we will simulate. We will use the FEM engine for the simulation. It is because the design contains an EMPRO 3D component which requires a complete 3D full wave EM solver. Ok, let's kick up the simulation. The simulation takes less than 15 minutes on a typical quad core laptop. As we saw at the beginning of the video, the measured versus simulated comparison shows very good agreement. Here the blue is simulated and the red is measured, showing good matches not only in magnitude but also in phase response as well. You can check the quality of mesh with ADS 3D Viewer. I personally use the field plot a lot since it always gives more insights on the design. Now we see the E-field plot at 10 GHz. Now let's think about how we can improve the performance. Since the views, including the signal and ground views, are key to mismatches and reflections, let's optimize these two views. I like to parameterize this in EMPRO since it is easier to do it in 3D than 2D. In this example, the radius of signal and ground views are parameterized. Yes, if it is necessary, we can add as many parameters as we want. There are two ways of optimizing the design with this flow. One is optimizing the design in real time using drag EM optimization. The other is to build a parametric EM model first and then to apply the optimization. Since we know the design well and the variation is somewhat predictable, we'll choose the second option. Let me show you how we build the EM model. In ADS, we simply need to set up the parameter sweep simulation as shown in this schematic. 
We set the variables sweep range and the simulation sequence. The simulation time will depend on how many sweeps we will run. If we have 5x5, five five, we'll take approximately 375 minutes, which is about 6 hours 25 minutes with each 15 minute simulation time per a run. After the simulation, an EM motor which use cached EM based as parameters will be developed. This motor can be also interpolated. It runs at a speed of circuit simulation but provides EM level accuracy. Let's put this motor back into optimizer and try to optimize the design. The setup is shown in the schematic. Okay. Let's run the optimization. The optimization is very fast and after a few iterations we can see the performance is already improved by simply reducing the radius of the signal via and increasing the radius of ground via ring. Alright, now we have gone through the process of characterizing and optimizing a 3D connector to board transition with design tools in this short video. I hope that you've learned how to do this effectively and achieve better performing transition designs. The project I used have a lot of additional information and designs that I was not able to cover in this short video. But now you can access them using this web link to download the complete ADS and EM Pro projects. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.